Many bills come into my office through different ways. Russell, along with Blue Water Network, a small environmental group in San Francisco, and Tim Carmichael, who was the head of the Coalition for Clean Air, came to my office with their idea for a bill. This concept seemed like a great idea to me. Let's build on what we've been doing on cleaning up the air and also clean up uh, greenhouse gas emissions, which were contributing to global climate change. I believe that 1493 would accomplish a number of important goals. One, it would improve public health, it would improve the economy, it would improve the environment, and it would create new jobs. All in all, it was a policy that was easy to embrace if you were in favor of doing anything about uh, climate change. I started building a coalition. There was a long list of uh, supporters, a Better World Group, Environment California, and the list goes on and on. We couldn't have done it without them. The most powerful messengers, in my opinion, were the healthcare providers. The American Lung Association was the first ones to step up to the plate. Thousands of Californians from college campuses to in churches and synagogues, members in organizations and civic groups, hundreds and hundreds of local, state, and federal officials endorsed this legislation. So it was that collective action sort of from the ground up. We got the bare minimum of 41 votes to approve that bill, and that's how the bill became law. And so the rest is history. Uh, it does take a village to, to pass the bill. It's reduced greenhouse gas emissions, it's protected public health, it's created jobs, it's stimulated the economy, but that would not have happened without four governors in a row in California, all pulling in the right direction. We owe California and all the governors a great debt of gratitude for continuing to um, push to successful passage under Gray Davis, but of course also implementation. He turned to Governor Schwarzenegger, and of course the word is about courage. We were able to meet his expectations that country live up to the Clean Air Act and continue California's work as a global leader on climate change. Governor Brown has this incredible legacy in fighting climate change, waking up the state and the country to the threats that we were facing and the opportunity in that moment. And now, of course, Governor Newsom, he's centering communities in environmental protection. And his other strategies, like 30 by 30, he's proving that there are beneficial solutions for today and tomorrow. So we're fortunate in California to have such enlightened leadership. We were sued by the automobile industry almost the moment I signed the law. Governor Schwarzenegger and uh, Jerry Brown did a great job in defending the law from seven years of litigation, every single case we won, appeal we won. Historically, the auto industry has opposed every regulation. They have resisted every waiver. When Obama was already uh, clearly going to be the nominee, we were approached by a representative of the industry so that when there was a change in Washington, um, we would be able to move forward relatively quickly and resolve some of the differences. President Obama came in office in 2009 and he decided to take about 85% of what we had done in California and apply it nationally. California proved that not only can you address climate change, get cleaner air, address smog, but you could also do it in a way that would grow a homegrown industry. And so really what we were doing in the Obama administration was codifying the innovation that California had already pioneered. So the law not only impacted the people of California in a positive way, but everyone in the nation. We had an administration that was supporting the idea that we should be working towards much more advanced fuel economy standards, that the industry was capable of doing it, the technology was there, It'd be good for consumers because they would pay less at the pump. California had a long tradition of taking leadership on this issue. We were the first to require catalytic converters, smog checks, unleaded gasoline, and then the hybrid electric vehicles. When we were talking about changes to a hundred year old model that the automobile industry had used, I just knew those changes had to be good. It would be exciting. You didn't have to choose between the environment and the economy. You now see the major CEOs of automobile manufacturers who had originally opposed the bill leading the world in the production of electric vehicles or other fuel efficient vehicles. This regulation pushed the technology, uh, pushed the manufacturers, both domestically and uh, foreign countries, and then the purchase 
right here in California. California, every six months, is increasing the tempo of electric car sales. We are right there with you as the Biden-Harris administration, and we're going to work together um, to marshal everything we've got, all 50 states, uh, to accelerate a uh, future of transportation that no longer puts pollution into the sky, where our workers with good paying jobs and good benefits are literally building a key plank in a world that can be more sustainable and livable. Proudly, 17 states follow California's car standards. Dozens of states, countries, and automobile manufacturers have jump-started the electric vehicle revolution by committing to an end date for the tailpipe. One thing we know, these regulations, they work. This is a good and creative regulation, and the proof is in the pudding. Does it work? Do people like it? Is it good for the air? Is it good for uh, reducing carbon emissions? Yes, it is, and all of that. That law, because it constantly upgrades emissions over time, uh, will require continuing innovation, uh, new developments in technology, all of which I'm confident will come. Oftentimes, people look to California and think innovation in terms of technology. I think you all have borne witness to and helped shape the innovation in policy leadership as well. Of all of California's climate legislation, 1493 is the cornerstone. It was built into everything else that happened afterwards. You can't overestimate uh, how significant it was. It's nice to look back and see how much has been done the last 20 years, but I know this law will continue to affect people for decades to come.